You talk about intelligence, uh, intelligence operations. I mean, you just, I mean, again, just you, you look at the um, Huawei. I mean, we've talked about Huawei before, mm -hmm. and um, there was a case in, uh, towards the end of this past year, also, again, you know, where where we've uh, picked up two Chinese intel agents who were busy uh, trying to bribe what they thought was an asset who could give them information about the government's position, prosecution of Huawei. Uh, it turns out it was a, an informant working for the FBI, thank goodness. Um, but, you know, they were just, they were, these guys simply working uh, to find assets who could tell them, what is the U.S. government, what's the DOJ doing to prosecute Huawei? I mean, that's, again, now, do you think we can operate in China in the same way? Well, no. It's a much more restrictive environment. So we have to be more clever, more creative in the way that we gather information about China's intel and uh, plans and intentions than they do. They just, also, isn't there also a difference in the way they've in, infiltrated the universities and the education system in the United States versus what we have over there? Yeah. Yeah. They, the university system here is a, is a, is a really good um, – uh, trolling ground for them, and it, and it's been that way for decades. And and look, there's there's you know this this case that I mentioned where they just sentenced this fellow. We extradited. You know he he was using the university system, going out and finding um, both private sector employees and also people in academics, right, who were engaged in business related to aviation or whatever, to uh, entice them. And again, and, and it, it tends to follow a pattern, right? If you're if you're a Chinese American or a Taiwanese American and you're approached by someone who, you know, spends time buttering you up and telling you how smart you are and, you know, we sure could use you to come over to China to give a presentation, uh, you might want to think about that, right? And there's a reason for it. And yet, you know, they're very good at what they do. Oh, look, this guy, uh, uh, Zhu, when he would take somebody over or he would have somebody come over to give a presentation – the Ministry of State Security, under the guise of, you know, academics or whatever, would take these people out to dinner. Meanwhile, they'd bang up his hotel room, you know, copy his laptop, do everything that they, you would imagine they would do. That's what they do. Um, and again, there's, I don't, I know people are going to disagree with this and they're always going to argue about this, but I don't, and maybe that's because I'm simple. I never viewed there as a moral equivalency between their operations and our operations. We have firewalls. We have limits. We have things that we can't do, right? And they don't. If it works, it works. Right? And if they think it's got potential to work as an operation, uh, then they'll do it. Same with the Russians and others. I think the real fear over here is the only way we can compete with them is to do what they do with our, with our people. Yeah, I mean, we, you could, I mean, we're doing, you could argue that one of the things that we do is, is try to harden our defenses, right? Part of that is making people aware of it. And, you know, uh, FBA, you know, they've been uh, taking a kick in the ass for a while now because of, you know, the potential for um, playing politics. But the Bureau has done, you know, some things really very well. One of them is in this counterintelligence area, right? They spend a lot of time talking or trying to talk to private sector companies about how do you improve your security posture against these threats. And, that, you know, that was not something they did before. So it's a relatively new initiative. They go out and they talk and they try to share best practices. It's not necessarily a two-way conversation, right? It's not like the company is getting inside information from the Bureau about investigations or whatever. But they're, they're trying. And, and the reason for that is the same reason why you, you know, from a technical perspective, you harden your IT systems. It's because you, you got to arm everybody. You gotta, what I mean, the, our critical infrastructure is owned in the U.S. 80 percent by private companies. 80%, right? So we can talk about, you know, trying to improve our security posture because our infrastructure, again, that's it, right? When you talk about these things, like I, I said, you know, where's the potential for conflict in 2023? Russia, Ukraine, China, well, an attack on U.S. infrastructure. That's right up there at the very top. And so, you know, you, you have to do what you can, but when 80% of the critical infrastructure is owned by private companies, you have to work with the private companies. You have to go out and create a dialogue, create an awareness, and that's always been a problem in the past. So they're trying to do that. Um, and then, yes, we try to, to uh, be better at collecting information on what the hostile nation states are doing against us. Um, but, you know, that's where I draw a line. I, you know, I'm always willing to say, okay, maybe, 
Yeah, maybe there was something there. Maybe I, I haven't seen evidence to say absolutely not, so maybe there was a conspiracy. Maybe there, all, all those things, that's fine. But I always draw a line at saying, fuck you, we need, you know, we need the intel community. We need them to be apolitical. That, that it should always be the case. Um, but we need them to be out there and aggressive and proactive in defending national security interests. And, you know, I'm not going to shift off that line. Well, but one of the things that a lot of people get scared of when it comes to overstepping boundaries is uh, some of the shit that we hear, like, with the FBI, mm. like the uh, the governor of Michigan thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where there was 14 people involved and 12 of them in, involved in this uh, kidnapping uh, plot. Twelve of them were FBI informants. That seems kind of crazy. Yeah, entrapment is a is that's a yeah, that's a different fucking yeah. bucket there. That's a yeah. Um, is that just a function of them trying to get something done, and you you give people autonomy, you let them make their own decisions, and then they they do something that a lot of people would feel like is entrapment. And yeah. these guys who got arrested who are doing long bids. You know, one of them was saying that it was all just fantasy. He's an idiot. He wasn't really interested in it at all. But they organized it. They instigated it. They designed it. Kept calling about it. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I think um, the way that you, you know, the, the way that you avoid problems typically is by, <laughs> it's by having your your uh, frontline managers right being um, very experienced in asking questions and stress testing every potential operation and activity or investigation and you know i i can't speak to that one because i wasn't in the bureau and and i don't know but um you know i i do know that if you don't have um management at, at pretty much every level of the organization which whatever organization it is that stress tests these things and says, okay, why? Why do you think this? Why is that important? Who told you this? What is you know? What is the purpose? Um, then, yeah, it's got the potential to spin out of control. And part of it then becomes, okay, you've got some you know smart prosecuting attorney out there, and you know thinks, hey, this is gonna be great, right? This is high profile. You know, look at that. And and so then they run with it. And you know, every investigation needs to be built on a very sound foundation, right? If you start an investigation with an idea like, oh, well, you know. I bet these guys might be interested in it. You, you've got to have evidence at the very bottom. Otherwise, it's just sitting on this pile of sand, right? So I think that's, you know, sometimes where these things go awry because there's such a desire to, um, you know, develop that opportunity or that, that case, right, that, that people forget to say, well, how did this even get started? You know, what was the first piece of evidence or what was the first thread? Right. right? Let's go back to that and look. Right. I mean, right. Was it the yeah. idea of the two people that are being prosecuted or was it the idea of the 12 people that instigated it?